the spars that I'm using are slightly longer than what I want them to be. So I am marking a blue line down on the end so that when I cross them all at the top of the inverted V, they'll all be the same height. So I have two of my spars and these are gonna be that inverted V, that triangle trestle or the A trestle that I have on the sides of my table. I've got my blue lines because my wood is actually different lengths, but I have about five and a half feet from the base end up here. And I just want them to cross at the same length. I don't care if I have extra up at the top, but I want my legs to be the same size. So I have my about 10 feet of cordage that I already cut from the larger spool and then whipped down in the basement. I'm going to start off with a clove hitch on the far one. Clove hitch, I'm just going to cross over diagonally. So I'm crossing over my original one diagonally. And I'm going to come up underneath that diagonal cross. There's my crossover. There's my clove hitch. See? So there's two different variations that we could do on a uh, shear lashing. If we were making a tripod where we had three pieces, what we would do is we would kind of go over, under, over, under, over, under, and kind of this figure eight pattern over these three. Since we're working on the top of a triangle trestle or an A trestle, what I want to do is actually wrap this kind of loose so that I can open and close like a hinge. Um, so that at the top of our wood, when we have these crossed, what we really want is we want this section that we're going to lash together, we want that to be able to kind of open and close and hinge almost like a pair of scissors. So we'll wrap this kind of loose and because of that I'm not going to worry about going over under, we're just going to go all the way around. So the way we start off is going to be very very similar to a round lashing. So I'm going to go around this as a bundle uh, about five times. And hold it with one hand just to keep it off the ground. So one, two, three, four. And look at the amount of rope that I actually have left on this 10 foot section. I'm just gonna stick with four times around rather than five, just to give me some extra at the end. And this is why we wanna use our rope at about 10 foot lengths because we never know if we're gonna have a wide spar or a narrower spar. And sometimes we'll just have extra rope left at the end. So I'm going to come on up in between these two guys. And this is going to be some of the difficult section of a shear lashing is now that we have a collar around these pieces of wood, these two spars, we need to get our rope to come up in between them to do our fraps. So we have our wraps, we're going to do two fraps. And depending upon how tightly we wrap this, it might be difficult to get this rope up through there. So you don't really want to you don't want to lash this like you're the Incredible Hulk or you never get these fraps in. So we'll go around twice. Once. Open that up a little bit so I can get my rope in. Twice. And you can see right here, I have a little bit of a knot in the wood and it's getting hung up on that just a little bit. And that's one of the reasons that when we have uh, good quality scout, scout spars, we wanna keep them nice and smooth so that our rope doesn't get hung up and uh, snagged on a lot of those things. So I have one, two, uh, this will be my second full frap. So now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and clove hitch this off at the end. And to clove hitch this off at the end, what I want to do is I'm going to actually leave a little bit of excess in here. Just like we did on the clove hitch, we took one pass straight across, and then the second pass was diagonal. I'm going to come straight across on this pass, and I'm actually going to come up in between here so that I can go diagonal out across this straight. I'm going to come up in between there. Diagonal across. 
and now I'm going to come underneath this diagonal to finish out my coil pitch. So you can see I had just enough to go ahead and grab with my hand and pull, which is why we made sure we had a 10 foot section of cordage. If I had taken one extra pat, uh, one extra wrap around here, I would have run out. Uh, and you'll just get used to that the longer and longer that you do it. Just to keep this guy from snagging, I'm going to go ahead and pull him inside if I can. There we go. just to keep them tucked in there. So that gives me one shear lashing that I'll have at the top of my A-frame trestles on each side of my table. So I'll do what this one more time, and then that leaves me with four instances of square lashing, and we'll move on to that next. So I'm done with my two shear lashings. So you can see I have the makings of these two triangle upright trestles, these A trestles or these X trestles. And because I wrapped that shear lashing kind of baggy, this operates as a nice movable hinge so I can adjust the overall width of that table. The wider I spread the legs, the tighter it'll go ahead and tighten up on those shear lashings. And then the narrower my legs, the looser those shear lashings will be. So the next steps is to go ahead and add my crossbar on my first one, and I'll do each corner of that with a square lash. So what I have now is I have the base of one of my X trestles or my A trestles on the side of my table. And I know that you can't see everything that I have here with the scout spars as they're laid out, but what we've done is we've just finished putting in, and this is why it's beneficial to draw a diagram. Uh, we've just finished doing the shear lashing up at the top of this inverted V. And now we're going to put in the crossbar. So what we need to do now is square lash on this crossbar. And this is what we're looking at right here. I'll move this off to the side for now. So just the same way we started off with our uh, shear lashing with a clove hitch, I'll be doing a clove hitch on this one to start my, my uh, square lashing off. So I'll come across straight. across a diagonal, then come underneath that diagonal. So I'll keep it wide so you can see I went across straight, came up on the right hand side, or my right hand side, your left, crossed diagonally over the spar, and then came up underneath that diagonal to get my clove hitch. And I'm going to tighten that up. Now I have a little bit of slack left over, so what I'll do is I'll pull it all the way around and I'll just kind of wrap it around here just to keep it nice and snug when I actually finish this lashing. One of the things I want to talk about is the, the spacing on this crossbar. When I do my square lashings, I always have my crossbar on top because when I tie a clove hitch, I want my very first tension to be downward. Uh, if I have my very first tension to be upward, like I would if I had this crossbar on the bottom, I'd have to pull up to start going around this uh, upright and what happens when you pull up on a clove hitch is you actually loosen it so now all my ropes are baggy so what i want to do tighten that up and i want my first tension to be down so just my own personal preference my crossbars are always on top of my uprights when i start my square lashing so what i'm going to do is come underneath my upright and it's okay if things flop around and roll around right now they'll start to snug up as we make that lashing. So I've gone under my upright. Now I'm going to go over my crossbar. I'm going to come under the upright again. Oh, let me back up. I told you I was going to get rid of this tail. I completely forgot. So what we can do to keep this tail from snagging as we tie is we'll just go ahead and take it and we'll just coil these guys up together. Nothing fancy, just wrapping them around just so that it's snugged away and tucked up out of the way. So we'll come underneath my upright, over my crossbar, under the upright again,
over my crossbar. And at this point, I have gone one, two, three, four. So I've made four sides of the square. That's why it's called a square lashing. So I need to complete this circle three times. So I have three wraps and then two fraps. That's two full circles. And that completes my third route. So I have three here, I have three underneath, I have three underneath on the other side. And I've been going around this in a clockwise manner. So when I put in my fraps, I'm gonna invert that so my fraps are going counterclockwise. So let me pull this underneath and that will complete the third cycle. What I'm gonna do is now instead of going back, like I say, clockwise, I'm now gonna take this guy and pull him across. And now I'm gonna put in my fraps counterclockwise. So I'm gonna come across and rather than going over and under, I'm wrapping a collar around these loops. So I'll go once. And when I pull this collar, that's going to take these overall, if I look at this from the side, you'd see circles. And when I pull these fraps in tight, those circles get squeezed in almost like figure eights. And that's what really tightens the square lashing down or the frapping. So one loop around. Two loops around. So I've done two fraps. I'm going to pull that as snug as I can. And I'm going to clove hitch off on this side. Uh, and this is just my general uh, preference. I like my beginning clove hitch and my ending clove hitch to be opposite each other, just to make sure that any loose ends that I have are out of the way. So I'm going to come across. Straight. I'm going to come across that straight part diagonally. And I'm going to go underneath that diagonal section. So I'm going to leave it in a broad X. So you can see here's my straight across, came across that diagonally, and then went underneath the diagonal to finish off that clove hitch. Pull that snug. Now I have a lot of excess left over, and that's because I used a 20 foot piece of cordage on this square lashing rather than a 10, because I don't like to splice, uh, using a sheet bend, I don't like to splice two ropes together on the same lashing, just because it develops a weakness, uh, and I might as well just use an extra long piece of rope uh, and not have to worry about it. What to do with this extra long piece of rope? We'll figure that out when we're done. All right. Two roughly equal triangle trestles. I just have them leaning up against each other right now, but I'll spread these apart and I will stake them out just like we had in our diagram. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it stacks up so far. Not too bad. The superstructure is what we had basically planned. I decided to make it a little bit narrower, but we do have our basic plan of two trusses with effectively a tension ridge line there up at the top. You can see here's our square lashing where we had all of our extra cordage left over. There's no reason to cut it. I don't want a short section next time. And then we have up at the top our shear lashings. And you can see this is why we had a little bit of tension in our shear lashings so we could bend these guys without tightening up the rope to the point where it snapped. And our ridge line, this kind of tension line that we have on here, running up, clove hitched off on one. And down there at the end, I just have uh, two half hitches and a round turn coming across, nice and tight. Feels pretty good. Clove hitched off on the opposite side 
running back down to our stake. And on this one, I put a taut line hitch just so if I come out in the morning and this is kind of baggy because it's gotten wet or humid or the humidity changes at all, uh, I can keep that line nice and tense and that superstructure will stay up. So the next thing we can do is I'll probably tighten up some of these square lashings just for the sake of safety. Now that it's all up, it's jimmied a little bit. It's always best to double check our lashings and I'll put a planking. But I suppose uh, before I finish up my picnic table, I have a clothesline. So there's always something to be proud of.